Welcome viewers, I'm Dr. Mitesh Borad from Medical Oncology at Mayo Clinic. Today we have the pleasure of Brooke McLaughlin from Genetic Counseling at Mayo Clinic joining us to review some of the hereditary factors that are involved in pancreatic cancer. Thank you for joining us, Brooke. Thank you. A question patients might have when they're diagnosed with pancreatic cancer is, did I inherit this from my parents? Am I going to pass it on to my kids? Uh, could you share with us some thoughts on the hereditary components uh, pertaining to pancreatic cancer? Absolutely. So about 90% of the time someone is diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, the cancer is considered sporadic. Mm -hmm. Sporadic cancer means that someone didn't, wasn't born with a genetic change. They just acquired the change over time, mm -hmm. which means that it happened after they were born, and therefore there's no risk to passing on that genetic change to their children. However, um, inherited pancreatic cancer is pretty uncommon. About 10% of the time someone's diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, the cancer can be attributed to a hereditary cause. Hereditary cancer means that someone is born with the genetic changes, and when they're born with the genetic changes, that means it's in every single cell of their body, including their reproductive cells, which means that each of the children that they have, there's a chance that that child could inherit that same change, which causes the higher likelihood of having um, an increased risk for pancreatic cancer. So in your role as a genetic counselor, uh, I'm sure taking a family history is going to be pretty important. Um, can you give us some ideas with regards to the elements of the family history that would be considered important in this endeavor? Absolutely. So anytime we're looking into a family history, we're thinking about a few crucial things. First of all, it's the age that the person was diagnosed with mm -hmm. their cancer. If it's um, at a younger age, that could be um, a clue that maybe there's something hereditary going on, especially if that individual has multiple primary cancers diagnosed. In addition, because hereditary cancers we know can be passed from generation to generation, we're looking for multiple generations affected with related cancers, as well as multiple individuals within the same um, generation affected with cancer. Mm -hmm. um, there's been some thought that you know race and ethnicity could also uh, play a role uh, in sort of the genetic um, aspects of pancreatic cancer. Uh, could you give us some details on, on this? So pancreatic cancer is more prevalent in African Americans than it is in Caucasians, Asians, and also Hispanics. Mm -hmm. It's also more common in people that have Ashkenazi Jewish heritage mm -hmm. in terms of the BRCA2 genetic alteration. Sure. Um, pancreatic cancer is also more common in men than it is in women as well. Are there tests that can be utilized to establish the role of uh, genes in pancreatic cancer with regards to clinical testing in patients? So when we are doing genetic testing, we're doing a blood draw because in your blood there's the cells that you were born with and those have the genes mm. that you were born with and got from both of your parents. So we can do genetic testing through a blood draw to see if there's any genetic changes in the genes that are known to be associated with an increased risk for pancreatic cancer. Some of those genes could include um, like the BRCA2 gene I had previously mentioned. So you mentioned this would just be sort of a blood draw. Um, and once the results come back, um, you know, can, can you discuss maybe a little bit about the role of the genetics counselor in relaying those results? It doesn't seem like you know, just any doctor could just do this test and, and relay those back. It seems like a pretty involved process. It is involved, and I'm very happy to see the patients to talk to them about the implications that this genetic test can have, not only for them, but also for their family members as well. Because if they're found to have a positive genetic change or a mutation, um, that increases the risk for not only pancreatic cancer but potentially other cancers mm -hmm. as well. We want to make sure that we're talking about some screening guidelines for them and what we can do to prevent the additional cancers from happening. Um, besides the BRCA2, are there other genes that folks should know about? Absolutely. There's lots of different conditions that we could be thinking of depending mm -hmm. on the types of cancer that are present in either that individual that's coming to see us or within their family. Um, some conditions could be Lynch syndrome, mm -hmm. which has a higher predisposition for colon cancer and endometrial cancer. There is, um, let's see, von Hippel-Lindau, which could have all sorts of different cancers. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of different syndromes, which is why genetic counseling is so crucial because we can help try to narrow down exactly what condition we would be focusing on. Oh, absolutely. So it sounds like there's, besides these select genes also other many other conditions that need to be evaluated in the in the context of the the meeting and discussion absolutely great 
Well, terrific. Well, thank you for joining us today and providing us all that great insight and guidance with regards to the role of genetics in pancreatic cancer. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you. Me. Okay. Well, I hope you found that extremely informative and valuable, and we look forward to joining you on another session to discuss other aspects of pancreatic cancer. Thank you. Thank you.